And for more on this, I want to bring in infectious disease Dr. Todd Ellerin. Uh, Dr. Ellerin, good morning. Thanks for being here. You know, we just heard all about these UK challenge trials. What's your take? Does this cross an ethical line or should we take advantage of the chance for more efficiency? What an ethical dilemma, Diane. I mean, I'd feel much more comfortable if we had a proven therapeutic that could keep healthy people out of the hospital. Without that, I'm really personally challenged as to the ethics of this. Also, it's not only about being a deadly virus, but what if these young folks, you know, develop the post-COVID syndrome? The other point is proving that you have decreased infection with these trials in healthy young people doesn't exactly translate into showing that it will work in older patients with chronic conditions. We've also seen some recent setbacks in the race for a vaccine with the regular trials recently. Johnson & Johnson paused its trials over safety concerns. Pfizer pushed back the timeline for its vaccine. How long do you think before we have a vaccine available to the public? Well, I think the key point here is that these are safety pauses. This is, is exactly what we want in these phase three trials. When we say safety is first, it's we're, we're being serious about this. this in, these investigators, these companies, are, safety is everything. And so these pauses are a good thing. They will not push forward until the investigators feel that the benefits outweigh the risks. Obviously, there will be delays, as we're seeing, but that's okay, because when the vaccine comes, we want it to be a effective but also safe. And you know, Dr. Ellen, to those of us who don't normally monitor vaccine trials, especially not uh, as diligently as we have been lately, sometimes a pause can sound scary, like, oh no, there's something wrong, that vaccine is done. How common is it for vaccine trials in phase three to be paused and then to end up going on to be something deemed perfectly safe? Yeah, important question. They're, they're more common than in therapeutic trials. So remember, you have healthy people that are coming into these vaccine trials, many of them, and, and some of them who have chronic conditions. But the point is, is, is that just because you have an adverse event, that doesn't mean it's from the vaccine. First of all, that patient may have received placebo. And there are adverse events that do occur all the time. The question is, if the investigators see something that's unusual, then they want to explore it more, they want to take their time, and they want to make the right decision before reopening the trial again. We're also seeing a rise in cases here in the U.S. One epidemiologist said the next 6 to 12 weeks will be, quote, the darkest of the pandemic. What do you make of that prediction? I do unfortunately agree with uh, Dr. Osterholm's point about this. Remember something, we are seeing near 60,000 cases. We were closer to 70,000 cases on Friday and winter is coming. That is a deadly combination. Our baseline is way too high. We know that this virus loves indoor transmission. One study showed an increased relative risk of nearly 20 fold with indoor transmission compared to outdoor transmission. I'm really worried. I do believe that it's it's possible that we could have over 100,000 cases uh, a, a day, and that could mean that we approach 2,000 deaths a day. If that's true, we're soon going to see more deaths from COVID-19 in the United States than in World War II in the U.S. That is a real problem. It is for sure. And now we're looking at the holidays, the cold weather, and flu season. What are your big concerns? What do we need to know, especially for people who really want to see their families? So, Diane, we know that indoor transmission is what's going to be driving the virus as winter approaches. What that means is we have to physically distance masks inside. We've talked a lot about wearing masks outside, but wearing masks inside is critical and trying to decrease mobility. And that's a real problem as Thanksgiving is approaching and it's a time of the year when we want families to come together and to be close and to hug. But these are all the things that fuel COVID-19 transmission. I know there's nothing perfect, but if you sit far apart at a larger table, if you open the windows to increase ventilation, you know, how much risk does that mitigate? 
Well, I'm really glad you mentioned optimizing ventilation because that's really important as we move indoors. There are studies that have shown just by opening windows six inches, you can really improve the efficiency of the ventilation in a room. That's important, the distancing, the masking, except for when you're eating or drinking. These are all very important. Also, limiting the crowd size is important and testing. Remember, testing before anyone enters, especially if you're mixing bubbles. That's very important, but remember, a negative test doesn't give you the license to take off the mask and get close to someone for extended periods of time, but because we know testing's not perfect. All right, Dr. Todd Eller, we appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.